Hey, Pa! Where are you? Come quick. Come quick. What is it, boy? Don't you see I'm busy chopping wood? Hey, Pa! Hey, Pa! Come look at what they left. They left one of those altar things. Quick, boy! Where is it? I don't have all day. Get a move on. God damn it. You were right. It's an altar. A fresh one. Probably put it here last night. Should we be worried, Pat? Think they are gonna come and get us? What does it mean? Not all the altars are warnings. Or even hostile. They left one when your was with child. No. Even before me. Or your grandma. Each fetish means something different. Like how we put together sounds into words. Words into sentences. This bit of corn husk in the shape of a doll. They wish us a good final harvest before winter comes. This finger bone, probably from one of their dead. It doesn't wish us death. In fact, it, respectfully, asks us to remember our past, and their past. And so you see, boy, they wish us no harm. We are both servants of nature. The land doesn't belong to them, or us. We belong to the land. And, what is that? It's an arrow, but it's too small to fire. Is it for a really small bow? I, I, don't know. Is that sheep fur wrapped around it? Not from one of our sheep, I'm sure. And look how it's placed. We should probably ask your grandma about this. Come along, boy. Ma, ma, the boys found something. We need your sight. What is it, Ev? Remember to speak up. Your old miss hearing ain't what it was, but my sight, on the other hand. They left another altar. Many fetishes. I know what the corn husk meant. The finger bone one. But there was one I couldn't understand. I've always told you, you know no in your bones. They're altars, usually friendly. They rarely mean us harm. They speak to us through them. But this one? A small arrow wrapped with a bit of sheep fur, but not from one of our sheep, and it was pointed towards an animal bone of some kind. Ah, I understand now. They honor us, wish us safe passage, and protection. Wish me safe passage. Safe passage? Where are you going now? What's happening? My loving son, Ev. The day I learned I was with Chal, one of the only times they spoke to me, like we speak to each other, I didn't expect their voices to be warm, soft, yet so different, yet still the same. I just learned a few days ago, the cancer, as they used to call it, has come back. They wish me safe passage into the next world, as I return to the land. No, Grandma, you can't die. Please don't die. We still need you. Don't be afraid, Chell. We never die. Truly die. We simply return to the land. They offer me to their oldest guardian. They say he once walked as a man. He made a pact with the land. That bothered me. And they still fall up to this day. But before my final day comes, perhaps I should tell of this man. Old Hola takes his spirit mother and him. In his own words, a great secret that botanated us, and divided us. They showed up on my doorstep at the vault, a week or so before the bombs fell, the son of a preacher, and the son of a farmer. The first is another story. The second was young Edgar, son of Ellis Clayton. The Clayton family had been farmers, landowners, since at least the late 19th century, well known in those parts. They had farmed, well, everything. The family's legacy had been on the shoulders of two brothers who worked in concert, Richard, the businessman and realist, Ellis, the farmer, an idealist. When I was a child, barely up to my father's knee, we actually hosted Ellis Clayton, a somewhat wealthy landowner. Yet he was, simply, 
a farmer, kind eyes, and worn hands. He spouted John Locke. He spouted Thomas Jefferson, insisted the miner, the worker, the farmer, had to stand together, or not stand at all. Eventually he became the firebrand of the free states. America had failed the simple farmer, and the serf was no longer bound to an empty contract. I remember my dear sweet Ivan attending a few of his lectures, performances really, and told me the men knew how to really light up a room full of drunken rednecks. On the other hand, his brother, Richard, played the other side, made business deals left and right, new farms, new, automated farms, Clayton Enterprises, would soon be able to operate indefinitely, without people. He dodged any questions about his brothers or the free states. He only cared about the future. So he told reporters and other busy bodies. I saw his name listed a few times with vault Tech, creating self-sustaining greenhouses which could still operate and feed survivors. If God forbid, the worst happened. The scandal broke. Maybe a month or so before the bombs fell, Clayton Farms were being seized. Ellis was being denounced as a traitor, blamed for subverting Senator Blackwell. Richard was nowhere to be seen, disappeared, or was disappeared. So I was surprised to see Ellis' son in front of me, clear as day. Young Edgar was mature for his age. He was like a small adult, responsible. He took his training and duties seriously. Everything was training for him, leading up to Reclamation Day. At that time, far, far into the future. While Sab and all the other were some of the best shots in the vault, Edgar could take down something, at almost the same range, with a simple wooden bow and arrow. He eventually trained others in survival techniques, how to stalk an animal, how to move in for the kill but it was sometimes difficult to keep him on point. While he was introverted, he wasn't rude. He definitely wasn't a bully like Jerry. He might have forgotten the necessities, but he was always kind. It was one of the few to flat out deck Jerry across the jaw, I thought, would start a war. But Jerry simply bought him around down at Wet Willie's. The first time I saw him say more than a few sentences was when I had to deal with Annabelle. He simply told me that the pack doesn't abandon the strong, no matter what. Those last few years in the vault, he had become a man, long before anybody else, but there was still a boy in those eyes. I still remember one of his last classes. He held my arms as I am the bow. He told me to breathe easy, await the moment. I am the hunter, not the other way around. When I set out on reclamation day, I could almost hear his voice. As I moved carefully, fear would profit me nothing. I had to make each breath count, each step matter. The trip back to Sutton, I didn't know what to think. We had all played right into Vault Tech's hands, destiny. Maybe, but still we couldn't excuse our choices. He came into my house, wearing a sentry bot head as a helmet, painted with blood from a fresh kill, but somehow I knew it was him. I asked him if he could remove the helmet. I needed to see Edgar for myself. He said he was not Edgar, that Edgar was dead, and I replied, not yet. He eventually removed it. I barely recognized his face, bruised, painted, uncom. I asked him what his name was, now. He passed for the longest time, thinking it over. He then remarked that in the old world names were given to us at birth, but in the new world a name was something you had to earn. I bomb, ace, bruiser, wet willy. I was about to tell him that people were returning to West Virginia, but he already knew. Said he'd been shadowing them for weeks now. Two tribes, he said, for now. Twenty-five years down in that vault, away from the world, 
and into a world where my name meant nothing. Only my actions counted. My hands still knew what to do. When I swung that first club at the Chinese-speaking spider, I had trust in my pit boy. When I first drank from a pond down the hill from the vault, rads were a fact of life now. I had a few supplies from the vault, the reclamation of the new world. But for who? I still remembered all those hunting trips with Dad and Uncle Rich. The skills came back quickly, staying up when down of my prey, moving with purpose, making every shot count. The responder's first mistake was thinking the world still belonged to men. It did. It had moved on from us when the bombs fell. I found a few spare guns lying around. Kept them there. They'll give off my position. I don't know what is lurking in the trees in this world. The scorching. A punishment from nature for thinking we were gods, and that we had the right to be so. I shot out a group of survivors. I recognized a few of them. They don't see me. Best to keep it that way. I took down a few scorching safely, from a distance, with my bow, the survivors didn't notice, just saw bodies. I seen that blue-haired weirdo draw a dick on a robot, such a waste of energy. Morgantown is even worse than the airport, the dead reclaiming the earth, humanity is unnatural in this new world. Had to come out of the shadows, for it, back seat, after all that science rot, I don't know, makes he knows I'm still alive, but that's it. Swore him to keep it secret on pain of removing his favorite body power. The fire breathers, have to respect them. Thousands of degrees and miles of darkness. They are, were, the toughest part of the responders, but even the scorch got them. I had to hike up all the way to the ski resort. Dad had a few meetings up there. He always said you had to respect a natural predator, like David Thorpe. We went back to Najur, and back in time, one tribe. The cutthroats, and then five tribes, and if time had permitted, dozens, hundreds, it is the way of humanity. Man is just another type of animal, apes predators. Usually, you can't be angry with a bear, or a shark, or whatever waits in this world. The trappers, one of the gangs, they dealt with the responders in a very interesting way. Some of this even survived. Maybe they'll return, one day. Rose sent me to deal with what was left of David Thorpe. I felt such pity. Animals don't feel pity, but such a pack leader, bought down by so little. The free states, brothers, cousins, the Claytons were loyal, somewhat. I remember Mr. Clay. I remember the sinks. I'm the last one left, and all I could do was howl. I came back to our homestead, all that land, reclaimed by the mire. Only the frame of our old house standing, but it was all right. Nature reclaimed what had, in the end, belonged to her. Great terrible beasts in the sky, the scorched beasts, makers of the scorched on the ground, it all made sense now. I went through the Robco building, took down a terrible thing of metal and fury, claimed its head, for my own, no longer Edgar, no longer Edgar Clayton. The survivors of Vault 76, such meddlesome children, unaware of the great changes around them. We were caterpillars in the womb, now become butterflies. Most were still in their cocoons. I've been in and out of their camps. They don't know who I was. Many are afraid of me, rightly so. But I mean them no harm. I quietly trade and provide. You do what you need to do for your pack, for your family. Another of my pack approached me. They now call her, the A-bomb. Everything told me to run, but I let her remove the mantle, see what was, inside. We simply locked eyes, for a few moments, and she knew. She simply said, I need you, and I knew then that I would follow my leader, anywhere. The Brotherhood of Steel, locked behind suits of power armor. They were already hardened for battle, waiting for the call, when the bombs fell. They didn't realize they were something new, but this, Liz Tagger D, she knew that farmers had to become soldiers, not an easy task. I found her body, down in the deepest part of the cave. I was probably the first mourner she had. I, cried, I don't know why, but she had been worthy of this new world. And now, the Enclave, if you start the war you have to fight its battles, they didn't know. 
they didn't care. I had an interesting talk with this Modis, a machine, yet it knew humanity better than it knew itself. It should film some documentaries on the man-animal. Tomorrow, we take down the pack leader of the Scorch, once and for all, but I don't do this alone. I do this with my pack, my family. I remember listening, maybe in school, I don't remember. A whole tribe of men with spears would take down such beasts, only stone, only wood, but they'd sit around fires for years, decades maybe, and tell of such stories. After that, I hunted, kept my pack fed, most wouldn't know where it came from, I didn't care, only men have egos, best to keep the pack ready for the next fight. 